Hey there, brilliant inventors. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce you to a fascinating project that we are about to start. It's called the Mystery Monster Making Machine Adventure. And yes, you will be making monsters today. Lots of them. Picture this, a machine of your own creation, not powered by batteries or electricity, but by something much more special, your very own ideas and teamwork. But this isn't just any machine, it's one that will function like a computer with the job of making monsters. How, you might ask, will our mystery monster making machine work like a computer? Well, computers collect data or input. They interpret this information to create instructions that it can understand called the process. And then they give us something back like information for example, words, or maybe they give us back an action, like a light turning on, or maybe they even create an object, like a monster. This is called the output, and today we are going to act like computers, use input, processing, and output functions to build our own mystery monsters. Your teacher will help you get into groups of six per team, and collaborate to build a single computing machine with three separate workstations and three connecting tunnels or conveyor belts. The workstations will be arranged in a triangle and the conveyors will be set up to transport monsters from one workstation to the next. But our conveyors and workstations need to hide the monsters from each other's team during the entire process, yes, that's why they're called mystery monsters. To assemble your monster making machine, you will have a number of five inch by 10 inch flat cardboard pieces, as well as some obtuse angles like these over here and a number of right angles that we'll use shortly. Each team out of the three will need three of the five by 10 cards and four of the obtuse angles to create a structure that will wind up looking somewhat like this. Once every team has completed their own component, work together to assemble a six-sided machine. Now that the basic architecture of the machine is created, it's time to protect each part of the machine from the view of your neighbors. Use a combination of your right-angled connectors with five by 10 and five by five inch cards to create flaps and tunnels to protect your part of the machine from other people's view. In the end, you'll wind up with a triangular machine with three separate workstations, each connected by a tunnel or conveyor belt. Lastly, feel free to make a storage space or a little stand for your monster that's free from the view of your neighbors so you can construct your monster in privacy. Once your machine is complete, it's time to move on to phase two of your project, monster making. Now that your machines are fully assembled, it's time to create your mystery monsters. Each team of two should now go to their own workstation. You will soon have four minutes to design, decorate, and construct the mystery monster of your choice. You can use up to seven small pieces of cardboard and up to six different connectors of choice. Be careful not to let the other teams take a peek at your design and just wait for your teacher to tell you when it's time to begin. Happy building. Great monster making folks. For the next part of your project, every team will become an input team and you will have five minutes to complete two important tasks. First, you will collect fresh pieces of the exact cardboard shapes and connectors you use to create your monster. Your neighbors will be challenged to duplicate your monster and create an identical twin. Next, you will use the paper and pencils provided to write a highly detailed description of your monster. Include critical information like the shapes used for the body and the type of connectors used to attach it to other parts of your monster. Include the direction of the cardboard pieces, the colors that you used, and the decorations and anything that you can add that will help your neighbors process the information and understand exactly what your monster looks like without needing to see it. 
Your teacher will tell you when it's time to begin. Time is up, input teams. Please put down your pencils. It's okay if you're not finished with your data. That's part of the fun. Immediately place your collected monster materials and your data sheet into the conveyor belt to your right and pass it along to the next team. Every team of two students should now have your neighbor's materials from your left side. Congratulations to all the input teams. You have completed your first mission and have advanced to become part of the next processing team. Your next job will be to interpret the data you just received from your neighbors to the left. You will have five minutes to do a number of things. Explore the materials, read the data sheet, draw a very detailed sketch of the mystery monster, and color in the pieces exactly as described in the data sheet. You can construct a prototype of the monster to help you draw the detailed diagram and decorate it, but you will need to take this apart before passing it along to the next team. Time is up, processing teams. Please put down your pencils, dismantle your monster prototypes, and pass the drawings along with the monster pieces through the conveyor belt to the team to your right. Please be sure not to pass along the original input data sheets. You can put those face down on the table for later use. Congratulations, processing teams. You have all now advanced to the final task in this mission. You now have become the output teams and will be responsible for using the sketch provided by the processing teams, along with the materials provided to attempt a monster reconstruction. Your mission is to build an exact replica or twin of the original monsters designed by your neighbors. You will have four minutes to build this model. Okay, output teams, time is up. Now, let's see how we did as computers. Please pass along your newly constructed monsters or your output monsters along with the sketches through the conveyor belt to the team to your right. Each team should now find the written input data sheets and hand those back to the original monster makers as well. Each team should now have their own original monster the original data sheet, a processing sketch, and the computer's output, or the replicated monster. Take some time to investigate the output monster and compare it to the original monster that you created. See what parts look alike and what parts the computer got wrong. Did your monster making machine create an exact identical twin of your original model? And if there were errors, look at the data sheet and the processing sheets and see if you can figure out where the errors originated. Was the input data accurate enough and detailed enough for the processor? Or was the processor's interpretation accurate? You will have some time with your class to discuss your observations as a group. <laughs> 